<laughs> Hello, we're here today with Brant Peterson, a fifth generation farmer from Stanton County. Uh, their family's been involved in farming here over a hundred years. Uh, so through that period of time, they've seen everything from dryland prairie to breaking the, the ground to eventually putting in irrigation wells and going the whole gamut of irrigation through flood irrigation to pivot irrigation to drip irrigation. And now they've uh, started using uh, Dragon Line, which is mobile drip irrigation. So Brant, you want to tell us a little bit about your your family, your farm, and things I've just expanded about? Sure, sure. Um, well, like you said, my family's been involved in um, every facet of, of agriculture there is in, in southwest Kansas and, and beyond. Um, cattle business and, and commercial feeding and, and then uh, uh, as technology arise we uh, they put in one of the first wells in the in the county and um, I remember my granddad talking about it and they had like an old D John Deere and they put a big belt on over to the top of the pump and then they just backed the tractor up to tighten the belt and the belt just had a nice little twist in it and that would turn and pump water and um, uh, he always says well we drilled the well and then it rained for a while and we didn't use it much and then it got dry and then they're like well how are we going to use it and they just kind of just pumped it out on the field and then they're like, well, this isn't very efficient. And so then they started making furrows and then they made ditch and then they figured out they could lay pipe and underground and, and lay pipe above ground. And, and then uh, some of the ground, not all the ground was, was feasible to put, to, to do flood irrigation because of the way it laid. So, so then they transitioned into some water drive sprinklers and I hear all the headache about what water drive sprinklers were all about. Yeah, they had Umatic, yeah. the, the original Hygromatics. And yep. then I heard your granddad tell him one time they bought three Lockwoods at one time, they got one set of gearboxes. That's right. So they would water one circle and they'd take them all take off. Take them all off, move them to another circle, and they think things are tough today. Yeah, yeah, we don't even know what tough was. Uh, we still have um, two uh, early 70s models Lockwoods, um, 10 towers. I don't, I don't think you can take them down. <laughs> it take, take a big tornado to take them down. Um, the ones all around them get knocked down, but those are still standing. Um, so then they transitioned into, uh, you know, uh, Nelson Rainbirds up on top of the sprinklers, the impact bird, um, um, nozzles up on top of the sprinkler, and then they transitioned into... Drop nozzles. Yep. So then they transitioned into, into conduit drop nozzles and uh, stayed up in the truss rods, and then from there moved into, uh, you know, uh, eight foot spacing, seven and a half foot spacing, dropped them down a little lower, and then uh, eventually into the, the LEPA system with uh, five foot spacings and um, did that on a, on a large scale. In 1997, we made the transition clear away from flood irrigation. We'd seen that it was um, a waste of water. We felt we could do better with center pivots, and uh, we made the decision at that point um, to, to do that, and that was about the time that I was graduating college and back full-time. Um, and then uh, from that time on, we were all center pivot irrigation, and. Uh, Somewhere around our mid 2000s, we we ended up doing some drip irrigation. Um, primarily, we knew it was efficiency, but it was also an odd shaped field that we we couldn't irrigate very well without it. And there's no way we were going to go back to flood, so we went with subsurface drip at that point. And and uh, it had some growing pains. You know, we had to learn some things about it because it's a transition, it's a shift. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then more recently, shifting into the mobile drip irrigation, and and so. Yeah, we've, we've seen and done most of it. You, you've not mentioned anything about the technology se sector. I mean, you, you guys were the first ones, your farm was the first one to install uh, telemetry from Zomatic. Uh, I, I helped sell that to you and sure. And you guys were pioneers, you knew more about it than we did, but you, you, you turned the whole farm over and you were committed yep. to the new technology and you really pioneered that technology yeah, the, for this area. The the when telemetry came came to be, that that really changed my world as um, kind of the foreman on the farm and and how I could manage my time, and allowed me to leverage my time so much better um, to delegating what we needed to do when we needed to do it. Mm -hmm. um, we were six thousand acres of irrigated corn at that time, so that's a lot of different pivots running and a lot of wells, and so we would rely heavily on the telemetry system to let us know when there was an issue and and uh, so we could get on it and not waste water 
and that even meant that I would take, I, I was on call all night long, that if, you know, if I had a half mile sprinkler that was putting out 2,500 gallon a minute, go down at two in the morning, I went out and, and either fixed the sprinkler or, or shut it down, because mm -hmm. I did not want to have the mess that 2,500 gallon a minute was gonna leave by the time we got around to it at eight, nine o'clock in the morning. And, and also that's a waste of water. And so we were so much better about managing the water at that point. It, it really was a, a very impactful time, the technology coming into it. And that was all with, with radio modems and digi, you know, digi, digipeding that across to a computer in the office and dial up modems. All, it, today, it's, it was really slow compared to what we have today, but um, really was transformational and my brother and I were able to really see how we could much better utilize our time and our efficiency. And I remember talking to, to your service department and kind of what it meant for them. And they said, you know, it, it really changed to where they got a whole bunch of calls at 8.30 in the morning and it, or, or at 5.30 at night. And it transitioned into the, they got calls throughout the day as they happened. And so it made, it made those crews more efficient mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Last year, you put your first system of mobile drip irrigation on. Yep. Uh, do you want to expound on wh why did you make the decision, you know, after watching it for the last four or five years to try that on the system that you have it on? Um, sure. The, the system that I put that on was, a, was an old 83 Zomatic, and the pipe was good, but I was on wide spacing, and um, I'd kind of been fighting, do I, do I make the investment on the sprinkler, or do I, or do I give up on... on uh, irrigating efficiently on that field or just give up on irrigating that field. And uh, I went ahead and made the decision to, to transition that sprinkler over to the, the Dragon Line um, because I just felt I could do a better job than I was doing. And I knew the technology had been proven at that point. And um, I never really liked jumping onto things too much in the front end. I like to get some of the growing pains out of the way and and be able to do that and um, so that's that was the it was pretty easy once once I kind of got to really thinking about it and looking at the numbers it, it became a pretty easy decision how many gallons per minute did you have with your system when you first started with mobile drip yeah I have uh, you know a strong 200 220 um, gallons per minute and I have a 123 acre circle and um, I go back and forth between uh, half corn, half wheat, or half irrigated corn, half dryland corn is generally my rotation there. Um, uh, I'd like to transition into a sorghum, but there's some, that, that field's been irrigated for a long time and it has some, some Johnson grass issues, so um, that's not really in the cards just yet, but I'm hoping to get to where I can do that. Mm -hmm. we, we've took some videos yesterday of your field, and so we'll show those here in a moment. And uh, just to tell about how uh, dry it is this year and how you're able to adapt to just a hundred and uh, well less than 200 gallons what your nozzle for aren't you yeah just right at two right 190 at two, to okay. 200 somewhere in there um, the the big advantage I see for dragon line is for years the nozzle packages we always over overwatered the inside and underwatered the outside because you can only make so many small nozzles or they'll plug up and um, I knew that the Dragon Line would allow me to put the right amount of water on each specific nozzle. And that was a big selling point for me. So I wasn't overwatering a small amount of acres and I was putting the right amount on my largest amount of acres. Also, this field has a lot of elevation change and pressure's an issue. And having the, the each, each emitter having its own regulator was another big selling point. And then, so here we are on the 26th of July of 2022 and since August 4th, I am at um, six inches of rain mm -hmm. of last year. So if we make it another, another week or two, we'll have six inches of rain in a year at that, fi at that field. And other places in the county, I'm drier. But um, right now, like I said, my, my uh, crop duster flew over the field the other day and, and applied the, the miticide. Um, and uh, he, he texted me and he said, that's the best looking field of corn this year that he's flown over hmm. and that was that that comes a lot he uh my crop duster says you can lie to your wife and you can lie to your banker but you can't lie to your crop duster <laughs> he sees it all 
<laughs> That's for, for sure, isn't it? Yeah. Well, what uh, did you use a dragon line to germinate your crop this year? Yeah, we had to use dragon line to germinate the crop. Um, so I, I do plant that field in a circle, um, and uh, we we shifted the crop uh, the dragon line over to run right on the strip that was planted and use that to germinate and uh, that was all coming along well and then we caught a little three-quarter inch rain after the fact but um, got good germination got good germination even huh. um, you can snap a string line across that field and uh, it's it's that even across the field good now when you started you had the manifold down lower because you had it on wheat mm -hmm. and now we're going to you know that helps you maintain watering of the germination and now we're I guess next week we're going to raise it up to yep. a higher elevation. Yep, we'll raise it up. Um, that corn was planted, um, I was a little late getting started on my pre-water for what I would normally like, but that old sprinkler had developed a few leaks in it and um, I couldn't water very good when it was cold, so um, until I got those fixed and, and also getting parts this year was a challenge, so by the time I got to going I felt I was a little behind uh, on my pre-water and then at the same time we're dry and we're hot and the wheat's using a lot of water so i was using that 200 gallon to rewater my corn and to water my wheat and so i i put my my corn in about the 24th of of may um and, and i used a 109 day uh flexing hybrid um, i intend on growing 220 plus corn on that field was my intention and i still have that intention today um, even given the extreme heat and that we've had. That's the only field I plan on beating 200 with this year <laughs> at this point. Well, I, uh, the other day you were kind of excited when I talked to you that you said you had six foot of moisture profile and 70%, 60-70, is that what you called it? Yeah, we're at, we're at four foot, we're at 14, 15 leaf um, last week and the agronomist uh, in, the, in the report had six foot of 70% um, profile at, at this point. So. Um, here in another, that was a week ago. So here in another week, we're going to be we're going to be shooting tassels, and to be shooting tassels and have six foot of profile right now is is phenomenal. Yeah, and especially this year, it was especially this year, and and we're only oh. talking. I only mm -hmm. put like two and a half inches of pre water on this year. Driving out here, we drove by several circles with spray nozzles and leaping nozzles and very very uneven fields yeah it's, it's very uneven yeah and it's it's incredible that your field's doing as good as it is it is it is truly incredible and it's a it's a testament to what the product can do um there's some there were some learning curves with it um being able to to have a really good water meter water meter on the system and and also um, good pressure gauges and knowing where you need to be so that um one one small challenge we've had is as dry as it is the animals are looking for a drink and every once in a while we'll we'll notice that the the gallon inch will stay the same but the pressure will drop and so then we know to go look for a leak mm -hmm. and sure enough you know a badger or a raccoon maybe bit into that and uh, all we got to do is is put a little splice in there and go on um, and then um, we're running a, a small percentage of chlorine in there because that well has a bacteria issue and so um, if your gallons go down but your pressure stays the same or goes up then you you need to run some chlorine to and clean that out and um learning how easy it was to manage that with 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 good the technology we have today has really made a big difference in in um, being able to manage it but i get i, get, I manage things pretty tight anyway but we're walking on about a 200 gallon a minute we're making we're making a, a half circle in nine, 10 days, somewhere mm -hmm. in there. So you're building up your profile very well while you're watering and your corn has deep roots on it. It's using that six foot profile, Yes. which if you didn't have that, it would, it'd be tough to oh, make yeah. it work. Yeah, you, yeah, it'd be flashing now. It'd be flashing right now. You brought up the mention about a few rodent or animal uh, issues or varmint issues once in a while. Um, uh, and that's, you know something that could be aggravating and some guys say well that's a lot of stuff we don't have to you know that's something else i got to worry about mm -hmm. but as we've talked to other growers you know when they talk about well they don't have any wheel track issues anymore they don't have to cover wheel tracks you know it, there's a lot of other ways to save with the use of dragon line that mm -hmm. you are taking on some other issues like you mentioned yeah you know like having to use chlorine you know that's something to learn it's just something we have to do if you have iron bacteria in your water 
you have to uh, kill that bacteria or the emitters will clog inside the tubing and you won't have flow and you're, you won't have even application. Mm -hmm. So that's just something to take a water test first and to deal with that straight on. And we we were a little behind on that, but we did get it cleaned up and mm -hmm. you're ma maintaining it now, yep. and, uh, a good way to do it. So is there anything else you could tell the viewers about uh, disadvantages to Dragonline or, or advantages that you see? Well, the main thing is, is, is if you know about those challenges front, uh, up front or, or if you realize, you know, we didn't used to have to charge our phones all the time, but now our phones do so much more and we don't mind charging our phones. So when you, when you look at it as, yes, there are some different challenges that there's going to be with this system, they're different. They're not new, they're not more, they're not less. They're different challenges. So you're right. Wheel tracks aren't an issue. Wheel tracks aren't an issue, then now you're, it's easier on all your equipment bouncing around. So you're not having to worry about um, uh, your knives or, or that you're plowing with or different things. Or, or like I say, it's a, you know, it, it, it costs money to fill tracks and, have, and to do that. So you don't have to spend the money feel, on do it. Do you feel the maintenance is less on the pivot running the Oh yeah. Tracks and oh yeah. The drive lines and all that stuff. Yeah. I, <clears throat> like I said, I've been, <laughs> I've been doing the irrigation for a long time and it is a whole lot easier on the sprinkler that it's not having to, to run in those deep tracks and the sidewalls of the tires aren't getting eat up on the side of the track. And uh, the, the pressure of the, of, of dry or, or wet or different things, uh, building up on the wheels, on the U joints and the pressure that that puts on everything. It's a, it's a whole lot less, um, and and it's a whole lot easier to work on. You go out there and you can stand right underneath the, the pipe, and it's completely dry under the pipe. The water is is of course dragging along behind. Behind it. you, it's yes. like ten foot behind you, so yes. it's dry around the tower. Yes. So everything runs in dry, dry ground. Yep. 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 And um, you know another thing was, was that is a huge advantage, was this spring, uh, we had some terrible terrible winds, terrible winds. And there was a lot of people irrigating because they needed to get some some moisture in the soil for this year's crop and um, it was not uncommon to have days of 25 to 35 mile an hour winds gusting 40. 50 yeah. and i drive by and i see water just just going off into the wind and then i drive by my field and it doesn't even look like it's doing anything from the road but then you go out there and I'm laying this water right on the ground, right where the seed's gonna be planted, soaking down into the ground and, and not losing uh, near as much. I appreciate no. you bringing that up because it's been proven by so many uh, uh, universities that we evaporate more than 50% of our water here in Western Kansas and Texas and Colorado uh, by wetting that surface of the soil and mm -hmm. then with wind blowing it away. Yep. And so that's how you make that 200 work like 400. Yep. in your soil so that's you're taking advantage of the use of the water not wasting it yeah efficiency is the name of the game um, the the more you can manage your efficiency and, and bring your waste down whether that's in your checking account your credit cards or your irrigation or your fertilizer the more you can bring that down the more margin you have the more profitable you can be um, and so if you look at it that way, I'm, I'm managing this water to a higher percentage of efficiency. Therefore, I can take some time to make sure that my emitters aren't plugged. I can take some time to make sure I don't have a leak. I can, but, and once you learn what those pressures are, and like I said, the, the, the biggest thing is having a really good gallon meter that, that you can trust, that meters effective, that, that you have the right size of gallon meter water meter for the, the flow that you have. And have good pressure gauges. And good pressure gauges. Yeah. And, yeah. and look at those pressure gauges and just trust them. And if, if you start looking at them and something's not right, um, you know, if you got less pressure before, than you, before a spot than you have after a spot, well, that's probably that pressure gauge is bad. Change the pressure gauges. The pressure mm -hmm. gauges are so cheap to the money that's being, that's being cared for by that water. Yeah. Uh, they're they're a minuscule amount for the amount of water amount of money that's invested in the field. You have a, a sand separator and a semi-automatic uh, filter at your pivot. 
a lot of people will say, well, I don't want to be having to do filtration. That's a drawback for adapting to mobile drip irrigation. Was that an issue for you to, to manage these filters? Absolutely not. Um, long, long as there's, long as I can put a filter ahead of time and I don't have to go clean each one of those lines out, I'll, I'll take a filter any day. Because mm -hmm. um, blocked nozzles is, is losing efficiency and that's losing money. You don't have block, yeah, you don't have to clean your nozzles two or three times nozzles. a year, do you? No. Nope. Yeah. No. We start to, when we start to well up after changing oil, um, we know what the pressure should be at the gallons. And if we hit the pressure and the gallons that we want, we know that the system is clean. That, that's a good comment there. One, the one thing that my good friend Jim Wood always talks about uh, with uh, farmers out here in the Midwest, uh, why do they keep watering during a rainstorm uh, when they could shut off? They just don't want to shut off because they have mud in their wheel tracks and they'll get stuck if they try to shut off and start up. And that's not anything you have to worry about with the dragon line, is it? No, not not near as big of an issue. Um, the, it does seem like Murphy shows up whenever you shut it off and you shut the sprinkler off and you walk away and you come back in a week and all of a sudden the drive line is falling off out of nowhere. But uh, your your opportunity for those challenges is, is diminished greatly by not having the wheel tracks mm -hmm. and not having to go clean the nozzles and tasseled corn, um, which is hard to walk through and, and that. So, um, trust your gauges, trust your water meter, and verify that they're correct. Well, thank you for uh, visiting with us today. You bet. We appreciate your business. Uh, we hope that we have a long-term uh, relationship with Dragon Line. I think I've been doing business with your family for almost 50 years now, so it's been a while. Been a long so, time. But uh, you've been a great customer, and is there anything else you'd like to add to, to our audience today? You know, if anybody has any questions and would like to visit with me about it, um, uh, you can get my contact information from Monty and, and you know, schedule a call. I can explain to you what I've learned and explain to you how I've been able to, to take the things I've learned and, and utilize them to, to my advantage and, my, and to increase the efficiency of my operation. But, yeah. Well, thank you, Brent. Hey, I appreciate you. your time today. You bet.